Welcome back to Step Outside. You know, one easy way to get color in your garden is by putting flowers in pots. We've got a lot of pots that they had on this site for us to work with. In fact, too many. Some of them were old, getting a little tattered and worn out, so we threw those out. But we still ended up with a lot of pots to do some things with. So we've added some annual color, like these petunias, some perennial color, like this lavender, and even some permanent plants, like a hibiscus or two. Now what I've got is this pot right here, we're just kind of finishing up. We've got a couple more pots to go. This is actually a coreopsis. And what I like to do is get some layering effect to some of these pots so that I've got a taller flower here in the back with this coreopsis that'll give us some nice yellow color to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plant these little periwinkles in the front. They've got some nice red color to them and they will actually end up spilling out of this pot in the front edge of it and giving me a nice contrast to the color. And it doesn't take a whole lot. One one gallon coreopsis and three quart periwinkles. And this pot is pretty much finished. Just add a little bit more soil in here and this guy will be good to go. Now one of the things that we also have to do with these pots is they're going to need to be watered every day in the summertime. Now, you can come out and do it yourself. The better way is to have a drip irrigation system set up, but it should be its own line, its own line on your controller. You don't want to be giving the water that you're giving to the plants in the ground the same as you're giving to your pots. Your pots maybe need about three, four minutes once a day, whereas your plants in the ground are going to need way more water than that. So what we've got is the drip line that we go ahead and set up basically this poly tubing. We've already run a line that was under the concrete that we can tie this into. And then we use just the spaghetti tubing. This will stab into the drip line. And then this little bit more spongy looking stuff, this is actually soaker hose. So once we get up into the pot, we can kind of just wrap this stuff around a couple of times into the pot. And it'll soak this and give this all the water that it needs in five minutes. Well, there was kind of a loose path here that was outlined by some rocks, but again, they're kind of long since scattered. Plus right here, this path went all the way to this cactus, which has probably grown a lot over the years. So we've moved this path over about two to three feet and over on this side, two to three feet. So we can keep it about three to three and a half feet wide, make it comfortable enough to walk through here without getting stuck. The first thing we did is trim up and prune back all of the cacti and trees along the pathways to create a safe walking area. Next, we marked out some additional pathways that will lead to a sitting area and the wildlife water feature. The paths are now ready for the final step, the granite. Okay, so go ahead and load that and get it out to the paths. So the granite we chose is from Grand Materials. It's quarter inch minus, and hey, here's Derek from Grand right now. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. So this is the material you guys delivered. This is, this is approximately 25 ton of quarter minus mass and gold. So what does quarter minus mean? Quarter minus is a byproduct at the quarries. It's broken down from very raw material down to boulders to various sizes, and this is the byproduct. So this means that we have quarter inch size all the way down to sand? Down to the number 200s on a sieve analysis. So that'll compact really well for our pad. It will do very well. A little bit of water goes a long way. Okay, well let's go take a look where we're using it. Absolutely, let's go. So Derek, you can see we're starting to spread our granite in this area. We'll lay about two inches down, wet it, roll it, and then come back with another top dress layer and do the same. And because the site grows rocks, literally, we've decided to use those to kind of outline the borders of our path and to contain the granite. I tell you what, this is beautiful. There are many different types of borders you can do as well. I really like your choice because it gives it that really native look. Here, um, after we get this compacted, I know it'll really hold up well to the foot traffic because I've done paths like this before. Sure, absolutely. As you get watering this and compacting it, it will hold up really well. There's also other dip different applications that you can do out there if you are, so to say, doing a driveway mm -hmm. where there's gonna be a lot more traffic. And what happens is tires start to rub. But for this application, this will work out perfect. What would you suggest if we wanted to do a driveway? If we did decide to do a driveway, there are different soil stabilizers. And what that does, it gets mixed in with the dirt, usually about seven to eight pounds per ton, or you can do an application of spraying also, and it holds up really well. Well, that's good advice. You know, I like to have these pads because I want to encourage my clients to get out and really enjoy 
their botanical garden, be in it, you know? Absolutely, I would agree with you. This is a beautiful place. Well, let's get out of the way and let these guys get to work. Absolutely. We have beautiful wildlife here in Arizona. So up next, I'm creating a special area for Fred and his family to enjoy them.